On Wednesday afternoon, a new build of the 9.1 PTR dropped, and with it came some mixed reactions from the community. Once news broke out that Ferals and Fury Warriors are getting some pretty gnarly buffs, Rank 1 players had their chance to react on Twitter. While some players are popping off at some of these changes, others are a bit, well, scared. But for good reason, because some scary things are definitely around the corner. And we're here today to tell you exactly what's going down after the April 21st changes to the PTR build. So get ready to polish up that Swifty one-shot macro, because things are about to get wild. But first, we have a question for all of you. Is there any PvP talent you want reworked for 9.1? There are definitely a few that are almost never used, so there's obviously some room for improvement. Personally, I would love to see druids have a ranged snare again. It might be overpowered, but I miss being able to slow people from a distance. But we want to know what you guys are looking for in patch 9.1, so let us know what PvP talents you would like to see. And when 9.1 hits, look no further than skillcap.com slash wow to bring you up to speed on everything you need to know for the new meta. Our website features class guides and matchup breakdowns designed by some of the best players in the world. Our videos teach you everything you need to know to improve your skill and rating in arena and feature high level commentary that you won't find anywhere else. So if you want to stay ahead of the competition, be sure to check out skillcap.com slash wow today. To kick things off, let's look at something we were all looking forward to and that is new gear sets. Right now, you can preview next season's gear on the PTR, including the beautiful new elite sets, which I personally think look really cool, especially when you compare them to the awful sets we saw in BF. You can also check out the new PvP item level upgrades from the vendor, and to be honest, I would just like to see a rework of the gearing system entirely, instead of needing to farm honor to upgrade conquest gear for the rest of the expansion. A player recently posted that it took them over 1,350 arena games to completely gear their character from 2v2 alone, and to me, that seems pretty extreme. Starting off the PTR class changes are Demon Hunters, who had some minor changes to single target damage. Some of their primary damaging abilities were buffed by 15%, which is likely in response to their poor performance in PvE. That being said, Unbound Chaos also received a pretty significant buff and will be even more threatening in PvP as its damage is already quite high. Moving on to Feral Druids. If you haven't heard by now, Feral Druids are getting a mortal strike effect. Their PvP talent called Rip and Tear has been replaced with Wicked Claws, which causes infectious wounds to stack twice for a 25% healing decrease. Once again, this was pretty controversial as Feral Druids are currently on the cusp of being the best melee DPS in the game, and now that might just happen happened by having their own mortal strike. Balanced Druids also got a new PvP talent called Alkin Adept, which causes Alkin Frenzy to reduce the cast time of Cyclone or Entangling Roots by 50%, stacking twice. This appeared to be broken on the PTR, as Cyclone casts did not consume stacks, meaning you can cast 0.7 second Cyclones as long as the buff is active. And if that wasn't enough, Balanced Druids are also getting a new Night Fey Legendary. Celestial Spirits reduces the cooldown on Convoke and increase its damage. While Balanced Druids might be happy about this, I am sure this will get some major complaints from other players. Resto also has a new PvP talent called Keeper of the Grove, which increases the healing done by Tranquility by 100% and makes it uninterruptible. This should make Resto Druids significantly more valuable in RBG teamfights and give them a better talent for Wizard Cleaves in threes. And speaking of RBGs, Guardian Druids got a new PvP talent called Grove Protection, and I think it is the most beautiful spell I have ever seen in World of Warcraft. Just look at this. Wow, that is so cool. It's too bad we will probably never see it used. They also got a rework to their Emerald Slumber PvP talent, causing it to now give 400% cooldown recovery rate while active. All in all, this will be a massive buff to Guardian Druids and RBGs, even though they are currently the best tanking spec. Finally, the High Winds PvP talent has been removed from Guardian, but now also reduces healing done by 30% while active. After some preliminary testing, it looks like this stacks with other healing debuffs like Infectious Wounds and might even stack with things like Sharpened Blade and Hematoxin. Monks did not see many changes on this build, with the exception of a nerf to their Chrysalis PvP talent. We've yet to see how strong Mist Weaver Monks will be on PTR arenas, but we will let you know where they fall on our tier list once the patch goes live. Moving on to Paladins, we got to see the reveal of some new Covenant specific legendaries, which includes a Kyrian 1 featuring everyone's favorite spell. The Divine Resonance Legendary will recast Divine Toll for 60% effectiveness every 10 seconds after Divine Toll is used. This will only happen 3 times though, as the proc lasts for 30 seconds. 
Rogues were certainly the star of Wednesday's updates, receiving massive changes to a bunch of PvP talents. Some of the most exciting news is that Dismantle and the old tricks of the trade are now baseline PvP talents for all Rogue specs. That's right, now all Rogues have access to a Disarm, which if we're being honest, gives them some much needed defensives against some of the other melee specs. Subtlety and Assassination Rogues are definitely strong offensively, but are relatively weak in their defenses, so hopefully this change rounds them out a bit. On top of that, the maneuverability PvP talent has been redesigned to now remove root effects. This will allow rogues to sprint out of Novas and roots and is an overall exciting buff to their mobility. And speaking of rogue mobility, the assassination PvP talent called Intent to Kill has gotten a huge buff on the PTR, now reducing the cooldown of Shadow Step to 3 seconds when the rogue uses it on a target with Vendetta. This will make it almost impossible to kite assassination rogues during their cooldowns, especially with the buff to maneuverability. Outlaw got two new PvP talents as well as a redesign to their existing options. While it is unclear whether any of these changes are enough to make them viable in PvP, we could definitely see more Outlaw rogues next season with these changes. Their new PvP talent called Enduring Brawler looks quite promising as it gives them a stacking buff with a maximum 20% stamina increase and 20% chance to duplicate Sinister Strike while at 20 stacks. Sub also got a rework to its existing PvP talents, including the removal of the infamous Cold Blood ability. Shadow Duel was also nerfed slightly, now lasting 5 seconds, and Thief's Bargain now reduces the cooldowns of Shadow Blades and Faint on top of Vanish. They also got a new PvP talent entirely called Distracting Mirage, which allows them to use Distract like a targeted teleport. This will allow rogues to essentially teleport to targets out of their LOS, including up a Z-axis. While this doesn't seem too useful for Arena, this might have some unforeseen consequences in RPGs. Sub also received some damaging increases across the board, most notably to Backstab and Gloom Blade, which now do 20% more damage, but a 20% increase to zero is still zero, and this doesn't really make their backstab damage any more threatening. Finally, we got to see some of the new Covenant legendaries for rogues, and with many rogues making the switch to Necrolord, it will be interesting to see if their legendary staples like Mark of the Master Assassin or Doomblade get replaced, though it is too early to tell what is truly better for now. And finally, the news you've all been waiting for, Fury now has a mortal strike effect. I repeat, Fury now has Mortal Strike. Their new PvP talent called Slaughterhouse now causes Rampage to stack a 60% healing debuff on the targeted hits. This is on top of the already insane damage that Fury Warriors can do. So I'm sure Swifty is out there licking his lips at these changes. We've already seen other big name warriors in the PvP community rejoice at this massive change, and we're right there with them because Fury Warriors could definitely use some buffs. And finally, to cap things off with some Burning Crusade news, we finally got to see some 3v3 games. And as we mentioned before, the pace of the game is actually really fast. Although globals feel much slower due to less haste, longer GCDs, and fewer energy and rage gains, the combination of 50% mortal strike effects combined with how weak healer mana is makes games end really quickly. I personally think the TBC meta will wind up being really fun, considering it's an extremely watered down version of PvP. You don't have to worry about configuring weak auras to track 100 buffs, but but instead, your global usage and resource management are way more important. The game definitely has room for really cool outplays, with some games coming down to whether or not you land and interrupt, which honestly feels quite good because kicks seem really weak on live servers in PvP. Mage Rogue seems to be quite dominant in 2v2 from some of the early testing we have seen so far, but once again that might just be because of gear scaling on the beta. It will be interesting to see if Rogue Mage will continue to dominate as the expansion progresses. Once again, be on the lookout for our early TBC tier list, where we will break down each class for PvP. And we want to know once again, if you are looking forward to Burning Crusade, did you play 14 years ago? What class do you plan on playing? Or do you plan on just ignoring it entirely? Let us know what your plans are in the comments below. And there you have it. We will have to see what is in store for the rest of the PTR, including what other PvP talents will be reworked in future builds. Once again, it looks like Blizzard is trying to buff some of the underperforming classes next patch, but it seems like many of the most broken specs, specifically Arms Warriors, remain untouched. Once again, we want to keep you up to date on this patch, so we will keep you informed on any important changes that happen on the PTR and any updates to the Burning Crusade meta. If you found this video helpful, be sure to give it a like, and if you want to stay up to date on any future changes, be sure to subscribe and turn on all notifications. That way, you will never miss an upload. As always, thanks for watching, and we will see you soon.